Roses are red, violets are blue. My name is Chad, and today I'm going to read some poems to you. Hello, everybody. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Chad, and today we're gonna share some poetry with you. April is what they call National Poetry Month, so we're gonna celebrate a different kind of story called a poem. And you can look that up and maybe have somebody help you with that if you want. But a poem is generally a little bit shorter than a story. Sometimes they rhyme, sometimes they don't. So we're gonna hear a few different poems today. Some are silly, some are kind of serious. So let's have some fun together. All right, our first bunch of poems are some of those silly ones that I told you about. And these are by Shel Silverstein. And the whole book is called Don't Bump the Glump <laughs> and Other Fantasies. And there's some funny pictures in here too. We'll read some of them. There's a lot in here. So we'll just read a few today. And the first one is called Glump. A warning for those who chance to meet a wild glump coming home late, late at night. Down a dark street past a graveyard all alone in a storm. Don't bump the glump. Quick Disguising Ginnet. This is the Quick Disguising Ginnet. Didn't he have you fooled for a minute? See, Shell writes some of the poems that rhyme, but they're kind of silly rhymes. Let's keep going. The Accident. I think I've killed a dickery. I did it by mistake. I thought she was a ball, so I bounced her off the wall. I had no idea that she might break. There's a gritchin in my kitchen. There's a slaverbacked Gritchen, who lives in my kitchen and makes his home under the sink. And he lives upon gipes that crawl out of the pipes and he takes only postum to drink. He is friends with the lubbard who dwells in my cupboard. And often at night after dark, they will sit on the stove and converse with the scrove and catch a few skink for a lark. They'll call to the blossets who creep from the faucets. They'll sit on the tea kettle's brim and the slithery scarbage crawl out of the garbage and jump in the soup for a swim. He'll sing with the wispies who live in Rice Krispies and serve them my cheese and sardines. And they call to the zox in the old napkin box to come down and play bridge in the beans. Then he may run a race to the silverware case with the gruppy who drinks all my drinks. And he'll dance with the muvin inside of my oven and whisper sweet sounds in his ear. For the Grinch is in love with the Mervin, poor boy, but she loves the backbiting Smee. Or is it the Jace? Well, in any case, I'm glad you could make it for tea. Tea with a Gritchen in the kitchen. This next one is called Gru. Do you know how to deal with a Gru? Let's find out. Don't poo-poo the Gru, for if you do, he'll bite you through and chomp and chew and swallow you. But if you don't, don't think he won't. The egg of the greel. This egg is the feather-breasted greels. It makes you feel funny just looking at it. Imagine how the greel feels. How to catch a gleech. If you want to catch a gleech, take a paper bag, find a cardboard box, dig a little hole, put the bag in the box, put the box in the hole, put the gleech in the bag, and there you are. <laughs> This next one is called In Waukesha, Wisconsin. In Waukesha, Wisc, you take quite a risk whenever you go to the movies. For there in the dark lurks the double-toed vark and the man-eating scale-faced scoovies. There are gobbled-eyed gorks and slimy-tailed borks and hunchlings and braggy beak bys and goom-booms and grobs and glabobobs and creelsies of various sizes. There are bony-backed bleaks and razor-toothed cliques and whaleys and glum patching gorkle, and the shivery streaks from the gatoring geeks are worse than the snort of the snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> there are glum girds and steam and the gribbly scream and my, may awaken the foul tempered fisk and the scale faced scoovies that dwell in the movies right here in Waukesha Whisk. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't go to Waukesha. <laughs> All right couple more for you. The Wild Chirote. I'd like a coat of wild chirote. It's warm and fleecy as can be. But note, what if the wild chirote would like a coat of me? Oh no! Hmm. 
the considerate, soft-shelled pheasant. You'll never know an animal more considerate of human feelings than the soft-shelled pheasant. Someone has mistaken this one for a pincushion, but he's too polite to say that he isn't. Hmm. Well, let's go about the bloth. In the undergrowth, there dwells the bloth who feeds on poets and tea. Oh no, luckily I know this about him while he knows almost nothing of me. The galloping gris, have you seen anything of the galloping gris? Purple-eyed and dripping fat, he went that way. I'll go this. If he went this way, I'll go that. Get away. And the plight of the panada. In Manitoba, Canada, there dwells a lop-eared pan panada, a native of Uganda, who sort of lost his way. The strangest beast I've ran into, attended by a Janita, who comes from the South Atlantana. Atlantana, G-A. Those are some silly poems. But that's just one kind of poem, as I mentioned. And so now, we're going to spend some time with Miss Rose, who's going to tell us about a different kind of poem called a haiku. Let's take it away, Rose. Hi there, it's Rose. Today we're going to talk a bit about haiku poems. Do you know what a haiku poem is? Well, they're famous in the country of Japan. Japanese artists for years have been writing short poems about what's taking place right in front of them. Haiku poems are short. There's only three lines, and they're really focused in on syllables. The first line has five syllables. The sev second, seven, and the third, five. Well, now that we've learned about the structure of the haiku poem, why don't we read one? This is titled The Hound Dog's Haiku and Other Poems for Dog Lovers by Michael J. Rosen. All right, this is our poem, but first let's look and see what's happening in the illustrations. Look, there's a dog and he's digging a hole. He's by this beautiful, colorful flower bed. Have you ever seen a dog digging holes? Well, this poet has, and this is a haiku poem inspired by a Parson Russell Terrier. Elbow deep in dirt, nothing to bury but ours. Holes are the treasure. Wasn't that a great haiku poem? So short, but so descriptive of what's going on. Well, if you enjoyed that poem, let's learn about more. If you want to read some more examples, check out our poetry. Since the library has so many books on poetry in the collection, an idea was brought forth that we should invite students to write poems and display them on the tree. So we created a poet tree and had our first collaboration with the Wassa School District. You can read their poems on the library's blog or Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about haiku poems today and a little bit more about our poetry. And now back to Chad. All right, thank you very much, Miss Rose. And our next book of poems that we'll finish up with today is called I'm the Big One Now. And these are poems about growing up and all of the fun things that happen as you start to grow up. And it's written by Marilyn Singer and illustrated by Jana Christie. These aren't quite as silly as the other ones, but they're nice and fun too. A thousand things more. A picture of me when I was just three, dancing across the floor. Still got the same nose, still strike the same pose, but now I know a thousand things more. That's so many things. And you'll learn even more than a thousand as you grow up. Taking the bus, not big enough to drive a car or my bike real far, to grow a beard, plus I'd look weird. Oh, I hope you don't think I look weird. To stay up late, like way past eight, to own a phone, but plenty big to take a bus without a fuss and go to school alone. Trying to ride part one. It's about trying to ride a bike. It's the biggest of really big deals, riding my bike on two wheels. It's red and it's just the right size. Can't wait to feel how it flies. Now here I am in the schoolyard, but why is this coasting so hard? How do I pedal and steer? I hope this won't take me all year. 
We'll come back to that in a minute. First Good Snap, a poem for the first good snap. Like the sound of the moon, like a drum before it's struck, I'm saying it was silent. When I snapped, no one heard it. Suddenly, aha, my fingers can now do it to think I couldn't snap, not so long ago. First good whistle, two voices, like a leaky old balloon, like a really tired duck. I'm saying it was lame. When I whistled, no one came. And all at once, oh, my lips knew how to blow to think I couldn't whistle. Oh, so long ago. <whistles> In the theater. Everyone says I'm noisy like a circus, like a riot. But here in the theater, I want to be quiet. Sitting in my seat, velvety deep, lights down, curtain up. On stage, a princess is asleep. I will not let out one peep. Shh. I hope we can go back to the movies pretty soon. That would be really nice. At the ballpark. Everyone says I'm quiet like the grass in the sky. But here in the ballpark, when I'm part of the crowd, I say to myself, I'm allowed to be loud. So when the rookie batter swings and scores, this rookie fan jumps up and roars. Maybe not like a lion, but you can roar pretty loud, I bet. First time left, first time right, left. This one is left. I think that's right. I mean, it's left. The one that's left, I'm sure is right. Whoa. It's like somebody turned on a light. I'm so bright and excited. I've left and I've righted my hands. Now it's time for my feet. Wait, that's not it. Wait, I've got it. Sweet. Counting money. 10 pennies, two nickels, one little dime. I'm buying a ball for the very first time. 10 nickels, five dimes, and look, here's a quarter. I'm turning into a good money sorter. I can count all the change that makes up a dollar. I can purchase a pen by my poodle, a collar. I can get mom a hammer, I can buy dad a grater, then maybe he'll make us pizza pie later. I can spend it or save it in my piggy bank for a guitar for grandma, woo, and a giant fish tank. A trip to the Rockies that someday I'll climb thanks to those pennies, those nickels, that dime. Here we go, cooking for mom. That's always fun. This Saturday morning in January, the sky is as gray as my woolly hat. My mom is sniffling. <laughs> Sneezing, staring out her bedroom window with a sigh. I decide to give her July for breakfast, my first cooking alone try, with Dad standing by. Eggs sunny side up on a bright blue plate, butter a golden pat perched on a blanket of toast. Slices of banana sailing in a fruity boat, a cup of tea with a lemon circle float. Dad makes a tissue paper carnation, lays it on a tray. We know it's worthwhile when mom says, just my style, and gives us her summer vacation smile. That's a nice kind of smile, the summer vacation smile. All right. Let's go to our next couple of poems. Here we go. We're still trying to ride. My brother rode his bike at six, and now he can do fancy tricks. While I wobble, shimmy, and shake, and flop to the ground when I break, Mom says, I will learn the technique. I'm better than I was last week. And Dad says that Mom's never wrong. And I say, it's taking too long. Hmm. You know, big kids do cry. Let's hear about that. It hurt with a hurt that I couldn't ignore like a shot burning hot I had not felt before. And I thought, I can't cry. I'm not three, I'm not four. Till Dad said, go ahead and I let my tears pour. Now I wouldn't cry for a toy in a store, or after a game because I got a low score, or out in the yard if my favorite pants tore. But things like bee stings, well, that's, what's, that's what crying's for. Those hurt. All right. We'll skip ahead just a little bit. How delicious. I am sniffing the ink and smoothing the paper, remembering when I bit covers and licked pages when I thought words were something to eat. But today, today instead I read. And I didn't use my teeth or tongue like some hungry beast to gobble that scrumptious alphabet feast. All right, some of you may have your big, big kid teeth coming in. 
My big kid teeth are underneath these baby ones, which feel unsteady, wiggly, wobbly, getting ready to fall out. Two are so loose, they could land in my juice. I pretend I'm a shark with row after row, such a big snout of them, they'll, they never run out of them. But mom says, nope, just one more set. Those big kid teeth are all you get. I tell her that's so unfair. Kids like sharks can use a spare. Ah. Let's see. Just a couple more. Cannonball! Yesterday I stood and stared at the blue bottom of this big pool. Yesterday and the day before and the day before that. But today, today, I hold my breath. I do not freeze. I jump up high and I grab my knees like a coconut. I drop with a smashing splash. Touch my toes to that blue bottom and in a flash, up I pop, my heart's thump thumping. I love this jumping, rising, falling, this cannonballing. I'll do it forever till someone makes me stop. I'm looking forward to a cannonball when it's finally nice enough to swim out in some water. That'd be fun. Okay, we're still trying to ride. Yippee, yahoo, and yay! I no longer teeter or sway. I'm pedaling in a straight line. I'm breaking at every stop sign. And look, I can turn left or right. Can I zip down a hill? Well, not quite. But I know I'll be doing that soon. By Sunday afternoon. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you learned how to ride a bike. Thank you so much for joining us today as we shared some poetry together. Maybe you like poetry and want to read some more yourself. And that would be great. Anything you read is great, we think, here at the Marathon County Public Library. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.